Well, I'm so glad you're here with me in the Harvest Kitchen today. I've been wanting to do this project for a long while, and my plastic bag started piling up from the grocery, and I knew I had a lot of material, and so I thought it was time to maybe try to make this video. My husband Ron and I are very conscientious about what we have and trying to use it to its best. As you know, we went through job loss, and but prior to that we were even this way because we really feel like we should be good stewards of the earth and not waste and not fill the landfill with a lot of junk. The Lord calls us to be caretakers of what He's given us in creation and it's very important to my family and I. And so what we like to do is to make things out of what already exists. It makes us feel very fulfilled and gratified to be able to create something like that. And so we wanted to show you what we do with all those extra plastic bags that come home from the grocery. If you have never seen Plarn before, this is going to be really interesting for you because some very creative people have come up with a way to take plastic bags and turn it into yarn. And that's why it's called Plarn, plastic yarn. Now what I have right here is a mat that I made out of it. It, I didn't make it, it's not perfectly square, but it's going to be useful. I actually crocheted this plarn into this mat. And these mats are great for, just, this, just an example from this, this is what I'm going to make the cushions for my lawn furniture out of, and even a little kneeling pad when I'm working in the garden, and a sit-upon when I sit in the garden and I work, and pulling weeds and things like that. Now, these mats, I've seen mats made that are the size of a person. They're really, really big, and they're used to give to the homeless. So there are ministries of ladies that get together, make plarn, make mats. I've seen um, churches where men and women and children get together, and they actually weave these mats. I'm going to get my husband, Ron, to make me a wooden frame with nails on it. I actually want to weave mats like this. I think it would be a great idea to take all this leftover stuff and turn it into something good that can help someone. So I've been collecting and I've been building up my balls lately because my balls of plarn because I have a little spot over in my kitchen where I grab those those grocery bags and I fold them up like a friend taught me to do and I turn them into my stash and when it's time I sit down and I listen to Christian radio or prepper radio or watch a good old time movie from the 1940s or the 1950s and I make plarn. So let's get started and let's see how this all works. Okay, I'm going to put the mat to the side and right now I'm going to put my crochet hook to the side and we'll put these bags back here. This is a ball of plarn. I've wrapped it up so that it's convenient for me to use. What we're going to do is we're going to make loops out of these bags. So let's grab a bag and look at it. When you come home from the grocery, you get a bag, you have all your stuff in the bag, and if it's not wet on the inside, it's great to recycle that bag, okay? If you have goop on the inside, you can just recycle it some other kind of way. You could wash it out, reuse it for something else, or I guess that might be the one that hits the garbage can. But almost never do we throw bags away in our house. So we get bags home and they, they're like this on the counter. So it's my job to come over and to fold them. And a friend taught me how to fold them really easily. The ones that I have have a crease at the top and a crease at the bottom. And so I stick my thumbs in the crease and I just snap that. And I turn it around and I snap this. Okay, so there I already have my bags pretty well folded. And yes, usually it's about like that. And what you want to do is you want to get a nice, even get your handles unfolded and everything, because we're going to use the scrap for something else. So you want to have your bag like that. And yes, I'm advertising for my friends who have Nico's Family Market in Harrison County. I think they're on the Harrison County line. And so I just want to thank them for having teenagers that like to give me lots and lots of plastic grocery bags because I come home and I make plarn. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to fold this over and we're going to smooth out and we're going to fold it over again so you want it to be kind of even. You don't have to be perfect about this, but I like to have everything kind of folded really nicely because it gives me a good clean cut. So I folded it twice 
and I'm going to fold it one more time. So now the handle's getting folded. Okay? And I like to make a crease so that when I'm working, I can move fairly quickly. I don't want it to be falling apart in my hand. If you don't put a good crease, it's kind of sliding out of your hand. Now this is where my handle ends, right here. So I'm going to cut the handle off, but I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to save it because later on that's going to be stuffing. And then I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to cut the little seam off. Now, I want about an inch slice. So what I'm going to do, I happen to know that my finger plus a little bit on each side is about an inch. And I am way over being a type A personality. I used to be and I'm reformed. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so I'm going to cut. And I'm, right now my hands are a little bit moist because I have the air condition turned off so I can get a nice sound on this video. But if I were working and uh, it was nice and cool, it'd just be sliding through my fingers. So there you go. That's your slices of plarn right there. That's going to be what we're going to work with. And each one of those is going to make a loop. Now these loops, when you put them together, they make the, the string very long, but more than that, you actually have string. So my husband Ron and I use these in our garden, in our vegetable garden. We use them all over the place. We use this as our string. So I can't honestly remember the last time I bought string. Okay, so now that's what's left over, saving it because it's going to be stuffing later. Okay, so now you want to open these up and just stretch them out. Now, if you have children that would like to help with this project, of course, you always want to be sure that they don't put the plastic bag over their heads or try to stick this in their mouth because we don't want any child to get harmed by plastic. But if they're older and they understand how to be around plastic or you're supervising, this would be a good activity to work together and to talk about being good stewards of the earth. The Lord really does want us to be, um, He just wants us to use propriety and, and think about ways that we can make the most of what we have. I mean, that's my opinion. It may not be yours, but that is my opinion. That's what I have gleaned from the Word of God. And I feel pretty strong about it. Okay, so there you go. You can see I'm just opening them up and making my stack. And now we're going to start putting these together, and you're going to be amazed at how simple this is. So the next time you get a pile of these bags at the store, you can just think, ha-ha, I've got free materials. Okay, so here we go. Here's, here's loop one. I'm going to get that out of the way so you can see. And here's loop two, okay? So loop one, loop two is going to slide through loop one. Let's see if we can get it where you can see it. And I'm going to pull that up with my finger right there. You see it? Okay, so it's coming through the bottom loop. And then you want to take the bottom side of this and run it through the loop that you just passed through the other one. So you're going to see it almost looks like a little chain there. Let me get it to where you can see it. Okay, now you see the loop, and it's going to slide. And you just pull it gently until it is taut. And now that's, that's your two loops together. So here's loop one and here's loop two. And now you're starting to build a string. And you continue again. Let's try it again. Here's loop one. We're going to send loop two through. We see loop two coming through. We're going to grab it through loop two and gently pull until it's taut. Now you may have to practice a few times and you may have to waste a few pieces. But don't worry. Let me show you what happens. On some of these plastics they're very thin, and so a little bit of a pull, and it's going to pop. Well, look what it did. It didn't pop for me. Okay. But some of these plastics are stronger. This one, as you saw, went pretty far. Okay. So, but if you have a mistake, let's say you pop one, and there you are. All you have to do is just snap it off. Don't throw it away. Save it for your stuffing. And then here you have another loop. And if you pull, Usually that little piece just falls right off, okay? So now you're back to making your loops again. So let's make another loop. So as I was saying, Ron and I use this as string. We have been using this for quite a while now. And when we're tying up tomatoes, we use t-shirt string or we use, and we made a t-shirt string video. I really need to show you how to make that 
on a video, but I did talk about it on another video. And this here, I'm just making these loops through like this. And so when you come home, you know it'd be a great idea if I would remember to take my cloth bags with me when I go grocery shopping, and then I wouldn't be piling up all these bags, amen? But what I've been doing is, I've actually been thinking, well, you know, I'm going to make it into something that's useful. And so that's what we've been doing, and I have lots of ideas for plarn mats. In fact, I'm thinking about making my own baskets. I think that I could make square baskets out of that plarn mat, and I could actually turn it into things that I could store in. Can you imagine? You know how we get um, those little inexpensive baskets made out of canvas in the store now? and we use them to store things on shelves. Well, why not make our own mats out of plarn? So, I really would like to weave though. I think weaving might go faster. I'm not sure. Oh look, I just broke one. No problem. Just gonna pop it off, and that becomes stuffing. And we have a couple more here. Okay, and so I'm just gonna run it through right where I made the mistake. Here's my loop. I'm gonna go through the loop and just pull it. Now sometimes you can pull one side or the other if it kind of gets stuck. Okay, and here's our last loop. And there we go. So now you take the edge, and if you want to make a ball of yarn, you do it just like yarn. You wrap it around your fingers a few times. You might want to double it around and make a little, little small ball out of it, and then you just wrap it like this and that's how you end up with a ball of plarn. And then I like to tuck the ends in so that it's easy to um, store so that it's not falling apart and all of that. And then a lot of these I have stored already in my greenhouse. And so when we're gardening, we just go grab a ball of plarn. My husband came in the other day, he goes, where's the string? And I pointed to the greenhouse and he went in there and he found a stack of plarn balls because that's what I've been doing lately. So there's my little ball, okay? So here I have lots of balls. Now, what can you do that would be really creative? Okay, ladies, those of you that love to think of creative things, I've seen women take juice boxes and turn, turn them into, they sew them together and turn them into beach bags. Well, this would make a great beach bag, wouldn't it? You could put a handle on it. You could just close it up the side. You could take some of this plarn and you could thread it onto a large needle with a big eye and just pull it through there or even use your crochet hook. You could actually turn it into purses. If you have young ladies that would like to do something fun, of course they may want to make them smaller than this or maybe not, but you could turn it into a purse. Can you imagine some kind of little loop or button there? And then the basket idea I was thinking about is I want to work on it a little differently and leave a corner kind of out here, kind of cut out. Maybe make strips and then whip stitch the strips together and then bring those corners together and create my, my, ba my basket like this. Okay? And so I actually want to make lids for them and stuff. I'm thinking that I can do it and I may use some wire to hold the shape that I want. And then I was even thinking, boy, this would make a great bag to put quilts and things when I'm storing them away. Maybe, I don't know. I think you might say no because the plastic might turn them. But, you know, you could use it for a variety of things. But I really have wanted to show you this. You can take bags of different colors, make stripes. You can make objects that are that color, whatever color you want to have but the creativity is really up to you and I wanted to show you because I really lots of people don't know about Plarn and I really wanted to encourage you if you're a craftsy person this is a great way to do something with recycled things that you get every day when you go to the grocery what do we do with all of the plastic pieces that are left over from the ends we cut off the handles the bottoms and all the mistakes well, what we do is, well, what I do, I hope to hear what you want to do. Maybe you have better creative ideas than I do. I'm going to use it as stuffing. And I'm going to turn this into an old-fashioned sit-upon. Now, if you don't know what a sit-upon is, that is something we used to make in Girl Scouts. In Girl Scouts, we would actually 
take newspaper or plastic and we would we would take plastic strips or round pieces of naga hide and we would either stitch them together or uh, weave them together and we would make what we called a sit upon it was either round or square and just your size to sit on and you would take them to camp outs and things like that well I want to have a sit upon that I'm gonna have this gonna be nice and soft and squishy so that I can kneel on it in the garden or sit on it when I'm pulling weeds and stuff like that and then also I'm going to make cushions for my outdoor furniture I have some of those very inexpensive plastic chairs out in my yard and they're not very comfortable when we're sitting around the bonfire or doing some work in the yard and so I wanted to make some plastic um, cushions out of this because first of all I don't have to pay for it so they're going to be free essentially and then I also want to have something that's weatherproof I don't want to worry about it if I forget it outside or I don't want to worry about it if it gets a little bit of mildew or junk on it from the chairs I could just hose it off or something like that throw it in some soap and water and I'm ready to go again so that's what I'm going to do with this stuffing I just wanted to mention that because I thought it would be interesting to you that none of it is going to go to waste if you have enjoyed this video please like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and if you are a subscriber and you've been watching us for a while thank you very much we really do appreciate your watching us also you can visit us at our website which is www.bayoutown.com and also you can visit us at our Facebook page which is facebook.com backslash Bayoutown and on our Facebook page we actually upload things all the time not just videos that we've made but videos and information that other people have made and of course always we would love to hear your comments we would love to hear from you you know homesteaders and people that enjoy doing these kinds of things we just become kind of a community and we know my family knows I know for certain that I get my creative ideas from people like you and so I always love to hear from people and hear what they're doing. So please share your comments. We'd love to hear if you tried this project and how it worked for you. But for now, I'm going to have to move on to the next thing, and I know you do too. But thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll join us again. So long, my friends. See you next time.